Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Happy Moment. My name is Dan. Glad to have you with me today. And today I've got a very special guest. You all know that I've interviewed quite a few authors on the show. And I know that I've got some of you out there who are also interested in writing and becoming an author. So today we're going to chat with the creator of 1106 Design. She is Michelle DiFilippo. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. I'm so excited to be here. I love the name of your podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Um, glad to have you with me today. And Michelle, uh, would you like to start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved in the, the publishing industry? Sure. I've been working in the publish ind publishing industry for about 52 years now. I started way back in 1972 at Crown Publishers in New York. And it's been kind of a roller coaster ride. I've done a bunch of different things in the industry over, over that time. But now I own 1106 Design and I specialize in self-publishing, helping authors who want to self-publish a good quality book. And the reason I have put myself out as a guest on podcasts lately is because there's so much misinformation in the industry and it's overwhelming to a lot of authors. Who do they work with? What do they need to do? How do they manage all the tasks involved? So I can help with that and I can help make sure that their happy moments don't turn into sad moments if they run into the wrong people. Uh, I like that, uh, Michelle. Um, is there, is there a right way to self-publish and a wrong way to self-publish? Well, yeah, actually there is. And unfortunately, most of the information that authors are likely to find first online is misinformation. It's not the right way to go about it. So what we do at 1106 Design is we, we, we do self-publishing with authors the way it was originally intended which means the author is the publisher of the book. You know, now you're going to find all kinds of self-publishing companies online. A lot of authors will be drawn to hybrid publishers or independent publishing companies, whatever they call themselves. The, the point is that you do not need a publisher to self-publish. And what we do is we help authors publish in their own name, produce a quality book, publish it in their own name so that when it's sold, they get the sales reports, they get the money directly to their bank account, and they're not sharing their revenues with any middle person, any anyone uh, that, that has no business sharing their revenue. So that's basically our message. Okay. Uh, can you give us uh, a little bit of idea of the, the process? Like say that uh, I write a novel um, it's all finished 100%. And I come to you and I say, Michelle, I've got this novel here. Uh, what can you help me with? What's the next step I need to take? We're a full service company. I have a good, I'm blessed to have a really great team behind me. And they, uh, we can help with everything from editing the manuscript to cover design, interior design of the pages, uh, proofreading, ebook formatting, and then most importantly, we get the author set up with print-on-demand accounts in their own name so that they uh, keep complete control of their book and they never lose control of their book. Okay. Now, um, your website, 1106design.com, uh, if people go there um, and subscribe to the newsletter, there is a free PDF that they can get. Uh, it's an 88-page guide called Publish Like the Pros, A Brief Guide to Quality Self-Publishing. And one of the things that you, you kind of emphasize in this is that it's important to make sure that you're, you're working with professionals. Uh, yeah, it, it really is important to work with professionals. And, and all of these people online who tell you that you can do it yourself or should do it yourself, sometimes this information is offered by people who know better but they're hoping you'll give them 200 or $300 to show you how to do it yourself with a template or some other solution that's, that's similar to that. But that's not how a traditional publisher produces a book. A traditional publisher will always hire expert editors and expert designers so that they have a final product that's worthy of being published and that buyers will love and buyers will leave good reviews for. So, What's happened in the last 20 years is there's been an avalanche of bad 
books that have come out by people who follow this sort of advice. And it's given self-publishing a unfairly a bad name, right? But self-publishing done properly with the help of experts, and we make it easy for you, is is the best opportunity that has ever come along for authors because now they can put out the book they want. They don't need permission from anybody else. They don't have to share their revenue with anybody else. And, and so I'm hoping to remind people that the original way to self-publish is still available, even though, you know, some companies like mine are buried in the search engines by this, these bigger publishing companies, and we almost never get found. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the reason I'm out here talking. Yeah, it's, it's important to, to, you know, I think first of all, it's important that as an author, you want you want to do your research, uh, make sure you're not make sure you're not getting ripped off by you know some some cheap company out there. Um, there's a lot of scam artists out there, unfortunately, that would like to take advantage of people. Um, so you really got to do a little bit of research. Uh, now, with 1106 Design, now is it you have like all these professionals on staff, or is it you help the writer like connect with them? No, they're on, they're on my team, so they're under okay. our control. Yeah, I have uh, two project managers as well as myself that interacts with the author as as we go through each step in the process. Yeah. Okay. Now everything from editing to design and formatting and all that good stuff. Yep, and and we we approach the job this at the same level a traditional publisher would. So if you work with us, you get that top quality work. You don't get, you know, just kind of the down and dirty stuff that's offered in a lot of cases. Uh, some of these companies take advantage of authors' lack of knowledge, and they'll offer them work that would never be accepted by a major publisher. So the and the problem with that is that when you send people to Amazon to find your book, Amazon is going to show the books by the major publishers right alongside your book. So it has to look as good as the books put out by major publishers so that it looks credible and people will give you a chance even if they haven't heard of you. So that's that's the reason for doing it well. Okay. Now, do you cover uh, marketing as well or is that a, is that a separate thing that people have to... Well, there's so many different ways to go about marketing that I don't like to dictate mm -hmm. to my customers what approach they should take. So I handle that in a couple of different ways. I have some marketing resources uh, on our website that people can go read about. One of the most popular ones with my clients is author marketing training, where they can sign up for eight one-on-one -on -one sessions with a book marketing expert who will teach them how to market them their book themselves online. And it's one-on-one -on -one private sessions. You don't have to worry about asking maybe questions that seem stupid in a group setting or anything like that. It's, it's just you and the book marketing expert. And she'll start wherever you are, whether you are brand new to social media or you're an expert at social media, she'll begin where you are and build on that and help you learn to market your book. Now, that's really good for people who or have a plan to write more than one book, for instance, a book series, because that knowledge can be used over and over again to market each book as it's released. And it's also a lot less expensive than working with a book marketing firm. But for people who don't want to do anything themselves, a lot of more, a lot of authors don't want to engage or they're too busy to engage in that themselves. I also refer three book marketing people that I trust with my life because they will not take the author's business unless they think they can deliver results. And, and um, they have integrity and they're small business owners just like I am. So they're worried about their reputation too. The last thing they want is for authors to be telling everyone they know, uh, they charged me money and it didn't work. You know, so so they're honest about it, and and that's also uncommon in in the industry today, unfortunately. Mm. Now, Michelle, uh, are you yourself an author? I well, the only book I wrote is the little one that I'm giving away for free, published oh, okay. like the prose. <laughs> uh, okay. No, I'm I my background is in design. Okay, all right. Now, um, 
just curious, uh, is it, is 1106 design, is that for any type of book, like fiction, nonfiction, or does it cater to a specific, a uh, specific genre? Oh, no, we've, gosh, we've done almost 4,000 books since 2001. We've worked on every kind of book you can imagine, fiction, nonfiction, children's books, memoirs, uh, self-help books, you, you name it. Okay. Uh, um, Michelle, I, I have to admit, I'm I'm someone who is a little bit guilty of judging a book by its cover. Uh, <laughs> Everyone I, I don't know does. If you're the same way. <laughs> Yeah. How important is it that someone has like a good cover design for their book? It is. It's crucial and it's terrifying because if you even think, if, if you look at your own behavior when you're browsing for a book on Amazon, people look at a book cover for three to seven seconds before they decide whether they are going to learn more about that book or they're just going to move on and scroll down to the next book. So the cover text is really important. You have to have a catchy title, um, a, a, an informative title, a, a, an informative subtitle, sometimes more than one subtitle, so that people get your message immediately, what's inside this book. And the images, too, and the composition of the cover have to be professional, again, so your book looks as good as the bestsellers that Amazon is going to display alongside you know, it's kind of crazy to think about, like, you know, how many good books might we have missed out on just because we didn't care for the cover? <laughs> but well, sure, you know, but but I don't think people judge it subjectively. I think when people first encounter a cover, they're making one quick decision, and that is, does it look like a good book? And and the the good design and the good typography and and good images and and actually the cover text itself all sends that message in a very few seconds. Yeah, yeah. Is, is the, the cover text something that you help with too and also like the, the blurb on the back of the book? Yeah, my ex we can certainly help with that. My experience has been that authors are pretty good at coming up with, with a good title and subtitle, of course, because they're the most familiar with what they've written about. If an author comes to us and the cover text isn't quite as good as it should be, I'll mention it. You know, and if they want to, we can uh, get one of our writers to to jump in and offer title suggestions and write the back cover text if they don't want to do it themselves. Okay, now there's a lot of a lot of specific elements that go into creating a book. Uh, is there is there any one element in particular that you that you see a lot of newer authors kind of, I guess, missing the boat on and um, guys making the most mistakes on? Um, well, yeah, it, in today's discussions online on social media and so forth, the, the you'll hear the word formatting a lot and authors have just uh, to attach themselves to the idea that, that they can format the interior pages of their book. And it's true, they can, <laughs> but it's not going to be formatted the way a trained book designer and a trained typesetter will do it. There's a lot of different adjustments that we make, not only to the design up front, but also to how the text is formatted on the page, you know, spacing, line spacing, word spacing, letter spacing, margins, uh, where the page numbers are and so forth. All of that has to look quote unquote right. And you can see this for the difference for yourself if let's say you attempt to do it yourself, you take a printout to a bookstore and hold it next to a book that's been released by a major publisher and you will immediately see the difference in the typesetting. And people don't even know what that word is anymore, even though I've been doing it for 50 years. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that just goes into, you know, why I said there's so many different elements that it's hard for people to, you know, someone just starting out to be knowledgeable about everything. And that's why it's important to seek out someone like, like yourself to kind of guide them a little bit on their way. Um, now, how the heck is an author supposed to know what book buyers are going to like? Well, that's actually pretty easy now. It's, it's easier than it's ever been before because you can search for the best bestsellers on Amazon and you can see what they're buying, right? Sometimes an author will come to us and they'll say, there's no other book like mine. 
in on the market and they think that's a good thing but i see that as a danger signal if there are no books about your whatever you've just written about there may be a reason for that you know you want to see other books that are similar to yours especially books put out by major publishers because they do a lot of research into whether or not there's a market for a book and so you can kind of piggyback on that research and if they're doing books about a certain topic you can be pretty sure that they've checked out the market and they know there is a buying public interested in that topic. Now, of course, that, that doesn't mean you should do nothing original. You should be original, if, but you should look to what the major publishers are doing for topics and then put your own twist on that topic so that it's unique. Michelle, do you have, uh, do you have any favorite authors or books? You know, I am so busy working on books that <laughs> my own reading list suffers, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I, I like uh, I like to unwind with, with uh, the horror books like Dean Koontz and Stephen King. Oh. Yeah, I, I like those kind okay. of books. Yeah, and, and historical okay. fiction. I love those. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely with you on the, the horror boat there. Uh, horror and fantasy, those are those are my main books that I like to read about. Uh, so nice to, nice to meet a fellow horror aficionado. <laughs> well, it kind of, it gives me perspective, right? Because no matter what I'm complaining about, about work or personal issues, it's never as bad as what Steve, what uh, Dean Koontz is writing about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Michelle, another thing that you, you touched on in the PDF is uh you advise against people only going the route of publishing their book digitally. It's important to have a book in print, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's been about three generations of eBooks over the years that I've noticed. And every time a new generation of eBooks comes out or a new e-reading device comes out, uh, you hear this giant wave of people saying that this is it. This is the print book killer. Print books are dead, but it has never happened. Print books are selling just as well and sometimes a little better than ebooks. And I think the reason for that is that we're all looking at screens all the time. And it's just nice to kick back and relax and read a print book. It's just much more relaxing. Um, audio books are selling really, really well. It allows people to multitask. You can commute and listen to a book at the same time. So they're popular for that reason. Um, it can get a little expensive to release your book in all formats, but I recommend as a baseline that you really should release a print book and an ebook at the very least, and then consider audiobooks if if you see the book is having um, good sales and you might want to add that third format later. Yeah, I mean you you really hit the nail on the head. I think we were all exposed to so many screens, and like I, I go to work and I stare at a screen for eight nine hours. Last yep. thing I want to do is come home and stare at a screen to read a book. Uh, and I, I, I can see a few good applications for it. Like maybe you, you're you short on room. You don't have a lot of room for books. Maybe you, you can store them all on a, a Kindle or something. So there's there's an advantage to that. But you know, I think generally speaking, most people prefer the, the feel of an actual book in their hands. Yeah, well, Just, Amazon offers this um, this feature where you can sync the ebook to the audiobook as long as the two files are the same so so if you think about it somebody could listen to the audiobook driving to the airport and well i guess they could continue with the audiobook on the plane but then they could also then pick it up in their kindle if they want to so uh and i think it's it, it's got to do with the kind of books like just just this week i i purchased an audiobook a business book but I stopped, re I stopped listening to it because it seemed to me that it would be better accessed in print where I could, you know, maybe highlight things that were important and so forth. So each format has its, its strengths and weaknesses, depending on what your preferences are or the type of book. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Michelle, so uh, 1106 design that's been around since 2001. Mm -hmm. Say, okay. Now, the way it is right now, uh, is that like the, I guess, the, the final version of it? Or do you have like additional features or services that you hope to add in the future? 
Well, we've been, we grew to, to offer all the services we now have just by listening to our customers. I started out just as a design firm and it was just me. And then people started asking, do you do editing? Do you do proofreading? Do you do eBooks? And so we just, I just kept adding team members to, to, to be able to say yes to that. I don't know what the future is going to bring. Uh, AI is a complete unknown, right? We don't know what that's going to do to every line of work. Um, but I hope it stays the way it is right now. Does 1106 have uh, a policy regarding AI? I, I don't think anybody has a policy <laughs> regarding AI, right? It's kind of scary in some ways. I, I think it has a lot of promise, but I think it also has great potential to be abused. Um, I think creative people are a little worried about it because every platform that you can use is basically capturing your content now and using it to train an AI device, especially, you know, Facebook just announced that they're going to do that. So, so it kind of brings up a lot of issues. It's like, who, this is my content. I created this. What right do you have to grab it, to train your AI machine? You know, there's a lot of issues that have to be worked out, I think. And then, yeah. you know, of course, if the bad guys get a hold of it, they can do the deep fake videos and so forth. And that's terrifying. <laughs> it's scary. It's yeah. All this so, technology know. and, you know, we're, we're still, I think, very much in the infancy of all this, like, advanced technology. And I mean we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg as far as what it's capable of doing. I mean, five, 10 years from now, who knows what the landscape's going to look like. So it's, I know. it's a little bit terrifying. And, and if AI gets smarter and smarter and smarter, at some point it may decide we don't need people to send us prompts anymore. We'll just do what we want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we no. might have a future, a future like in the Terminator, you know, where machines take <laughs> over. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. And how would you stop it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, I know it's I, uh, the people who created AI are worried about it. So that that gives me pause. Yeah. Do you have a when someone sub submits uh, their manuscript to you, do you have a way of like discerning if it's AI or not? No. And and what I do is I just put a disclaimer in, in our contract that says you you are t you are guaranteeing to me that you created this content. And that you have the right okay. to publish this content. Um, at the moment, that's all I can do. I don't know how you could possibly find out if AI created it. Yeah, it's, you know, I've, I've seen some AI writing that's like you, you can't tell the difference. I mean, a little bit. Some of it's kind of like seems to lack like a certain emotion to it, I guess, or a certain heart to it. But. Mm -hmm. You know, as we just mentioned, AI is advancing at a pretty rapid pace. So I don't know what you do. <laughs> and then and then it's a matter of degree too, right? I mean, I use Grammarly to make sure I haven't overlooked any mistakes. So that's technically AI. <laughs> so you can't really yeah. say, uh, you know, we, we, AI is not involved in any writing. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, yeah. do you... Uh, you know, once someone, uh, they, they write a book, they go through the process with you, uh, their book gets published. Um, are there any, like, uh, does anyone stand out as like a particular success story that you've had? Oh gosh. Yeah. Well, the business folks, uh, are the ones who come back time and time again for, for more books, uh, because writing a book for your business is, a great way to promote your business and let people find out about you in a non-pressurized way so that, you know, they can, you can, you can grab their attention for longer than you can online. I mean, most websites, people stay just a couple of minutes, right? So if you write a book and you offer a book on your website, it doesn't have to be a long book. It's a way to tell your story in more depth so that people can decide if they want to reach out to you and contact you. Now, I will, I will promise this. We offer the book on our website, like you mentioned, but I promise you that you will not get start getting three emails a day <laughs> from us as, as soon as you enter your email address. We don't 
we don't do that kind of aggressive marketing or high pressure marketing. You know, if you want to reach out to us after you read it, we'll be happy to have a respectful conversation with you. Michelle, how difficult is it for an author, especially a new one, to make any money off of their work? It is a challenge. I won't lie to authors about that because so many people are writing books right now. And and even on the flip side of that, we're all inundated with thousands of messages a day, right? So to, to capture anyone's attention is just a huge challenge now. It's it's way different than when I first started working, where the only access you had to information was magazines, maybe, and you would see an ad for a book and decide to buy it, right? But now you probably get 100 tweets a day about somebody who has written a book. And, you know, how do you, how do you break through? It's hard for your message to break through. It's the only thing I would... Um, say is the control what you can and that is make sure your book is is produced well so that when people do see it they'll they'll be confident in it and they'll be willing to purchase it if it looks like a good book to them absolutely uh, michelle uh, the website is 1106design.com and before I ask you if you have any final closing thoughts, I'd like to give a few final closing thoughts here. And I'm looking at the camera now. I'm pointing at you who's listening to this. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. if you're a writer, cop to it. You know, you got to get that story out there. Um, and even if you're not a writer, maybe just take 15 minutes after listening to this, give it a try, see what happens. You know, but the important thing is, you know, get some words on paper um, and then just go from there. So that's my message. <laughs> Michelle, oh, no, do you I have agree any with that. closing thoughts? <laughs> I agree with that 100%. The hardest part is starting. Once you start, yes. you'll find the energy to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Now, why should people choose 1106 Design? Because we do the job right, and we don't take control of your book like a publisher will. We're just a service provider. We're working for you. And we want you to succeed so you get our full attention. We're a small company. We're not a great big book factory where you're going to be hoisted onto an assembly line with the same solution offered to every author. You get a custom book from us. We listen to you. We answer your questions. And together, we'll make a great book. And how can authors get in touch? You can uh, go to the website, 1106design.com. You'll find there a contact form where you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your book. And once we get that contact form, we'll reach out to you and schedule a phone call. Okay, very cool. Uh, any social media links you want to throw out there? Oh, yeah, sure. We're on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn uh, primarily. I've got a couple of videos up on YouTube. You can find our newsletter on Substack. Uh, but, you know, if you sign up and get the PDF of my book, you'll be automatically subscribed to our newsletter. So there's lots of ways to, to, to reach us online. Okay. And I'll definitely throw some links in the description of this episode to help people find you. And Michelle DiFilippo, thank you so much for coming on. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it too. All right. And uh, thanks everyone for listening. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Just search for a happy moment and I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.